Hi and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. Energy transfer in the body. Understanding the energy continuum to explain which energy system is the main energy provider according to the intensity and duration of the training. Energy transfer in the body. We need a constant supply of energy so that we can perform everyday tasks such as tissue repair and body growth. The more exercise we do, the more energy is required. When we exercise, the body converts energy from food into energy for the muscle contractions in order to produce movements such as running, jumping, catching and throwing. However, how is this energy produced when we need it quickly? The intensity and the duration of the activity play an important role in which energy is provided. Key terms you should know before we start this section. Adenine triphosphate, the only usable form of energy in the body. This is also referred to as ATP, adenine triphosphate. In the body, the energy we use for muscle contractions comes from adenine triphosphate. It is the only usable form of chemical energy in the body. The energy we derive from the food that we used to form ATP. ATP consists of one adenine and three phosphates, hence tri. ATP breakdown. Enzymes are used to break down compounds, and in this instance, the ATP pase is the enzyme used to break down ATP, leaving adenase diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. Below are three diagrams that show the breakdown visually. An ATP molecule looks like this, with the three phosphates. The energy is then released when the compound is broken down. And then ATPase breaks down the ATP to produce ADP and PI. Energy systems. The body has to constantly rebuild the ATP by converting the ADP and PI back into ATP. We can resynthesize ATP from three different types of chemical reactions in the muscle cells. These chemical reactions are fueled by either food or a chemical called phosphocreatine, which is found in our muscles. The conversion of these fuels into energy takes place through one of three energy systems. The aerobic system, the ATP PC system, and the anaerobic glycolic system. Each energy system is suited into a particular type of exercise, depending on its intensity and duration and whether oxygen is present. The higher the intensity of the activity, the more the individual will rely on anaerobic energy production from either the ATP PC or the anaerobic glycolic system. The lower the intensity and the longer the duration of the activity, the more the individual will use aerobic system. The aerobic system. When exercise intensity is low and oxygen supply is high, e.g. jogging, the aerobic system is preferred energy pathway. This system breaks down glucose into carbon dioxide and water, which in the presence of oxygen is much more efficient. The complete oxidation of glucose can produce up to 38 molecules of ATP. Fats in the form of fatty acids and proteins in the form of amino acids can also be broken down. The products of fat and protein metabolism are reduced to the molecule acetyl coenzyme A that enters the Krebs cycle. Key terms you should know. Glycolysis, a process in which the glucose is, con is converted into pruvate to produce energy. Sarcoplasm, the fluid that surrounds the nucleus of a muscle fibre and is the site where anaerobic respiration takes place. Krebs cycle, a series of clinical chemical reactions that takes place using oxygen in the matrix of the mitochondria. How this works to provide energy. Stage one. The aerobic system has three stages. Glycolysis, the first stage is anaerobic, so it takes place in the sarcoplasm of the muscle cell. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose to pyruvic acid and is discussed in more detail later in this presentation. For every molecule of glucose undergoing glycolysis, a net of two molecules of ATP is formed. Before the pruvic acid produces glycolysis, can enter the next stage. It is oxidized into two atrial groups and is then carried into the Krebs cycle by the coenzyme A. Stage two, the Krebs cycle. The two atrial groups diffuse into the matrix of the mitochondria and a complex cycle of reactions occurs in a process known as the Krebs cycle. Here the atrial group combined with the oxyacetyl acid forming a citric acid. Hydrogen is removed from the citric acid by the rearranged form of cryptic acid undergoes Acid undergoes oxidative carbolization, which simply means that the carbon and the hydrogen are given off. The carbon forms carbon dioxide, which is transported to the lungs and is breathed out, and the hydrogen is taken to the electron transport chain. 
The reaction that occurs results in the production of two molecules of ATP. As you can see here from this diagram, the electron transport chain, hydrogen is carried to the electron transport chain by hydrogen carriers. This occurs in the cristae of the mitochondria and the hydrogen splits into hydrogen ions and electrons and then are charged with potential energy. The hydrogen ions are oxidized to form water while the hydrogen electrons provide the energy with resynthesized ATP. Throughout this process, 34 ATP are formed. It's important to remember that so far we've only discussed glucose with regards to the aerobic system, but fats in the form of fatty acids and proteins in the form of amino acids are two other energy sources that can be broken down under aerobic conditions to provide energy for us to exercise. These can either enter the Krebs cycle and eventually the electron transport chain to produce ATP. Key terms you should know, electron transport chain. This involves a series of chemical reactions in the cristae of the mitochondria where hydrogen is oxidized to water and 34 ATP are produced. Beta oxidation. Stored fat is broken down into glycol and free fatty acids for transportation by the blood. These fatty acids then undergo a process called beta oxidization, whereby they are converted into acerol coenzyme A, which is the entry molecule for the Krebs cycle. From this point on, fat metabolism follows the same path as the glycogen metabolism. More ATP can be made from one molecule of fatty acids than one molecule of glucose, which is why in long duration, low intensity exercise, fatty acids will be the predominant energy source but this depends on the fitness of the performer. Advantages and disadvantages of the aerobic system. The advantages that it creates more ATP can produce, for example, 36 ATP. There are no fatiguing byproducts, for example, carbon dioxide and water. There's lots of glycogen and, and triglyceride stores, so exercise can last for a longer time. The disadvantages. This is a complicated system that cannot be used straight away. It takes a while for enough oxygen to become available to meet the demands of the activity and ensure glycogen and fatty acids are completely broken down. Fatty acids transportation to the muscles is low and also requires 15% more oxygen to be broken down than glycogen. Here's a diagram of the aerobic system. The glycogen gets broken down to glucose, releasing 2 ATP. The peruvic acid then becomes the, the acerol coenzyme A. This then creates creates hydrogen in the mitochondria along with oxygen, water, which creates 34 ATP. This is all part of the electron transport chain. As you can see here, the two things happen in the two very different places. The sarcoplasm is working off the glycogen and the mitochondria is working aerobically with the hydrogen, oxygen and water. Key terms you should know. Phosphocreatine, an energy rich phosphate compound found in the sarcoplasm of the muscles. The ATPP system. This is an energy system using phosphocreatine as its fuel. PC is an energy rich phosphate compound found in the sarcoplasm of the muscles and can be broken down quickly and easily to release energy to be resynthesized ATP. Its rapid availability is important for single maximal movements such as long jump or shot put. However, the disadvantage of this system is that the stores are limited. There is only enough PC to last five to eight seconds and this can be replenished during low intensity work when oxygen is available. For example, Usain Bolt does not run the whole 100 meter with PC as his only energy source. He slows down in the last 20 minutes as his stores of PC run out and he has to use a slower method of producing energy. How the ATP system provides energy. The ATP system is an anaerobic process of resynthesis ATP when the enzyme creatine kinase detects high levels of ADP. It breaks down the phosphocreatine in the muscles to phosphate and creatine, releasing energy. So phosphate creatine, PC, breaks down the phosphate plus creatine to create energy. This energy is then used to convert ADP to ATP in a coupled reaction. Energy comes phosphate plus phosphate plus adenines, becoming adenine triphosphate. ATP system continued. For every molecule of PC broken down, there is enough energy released to create one molecule of ATP. This means that the system is not very efficient, but it does have its advantages of not producing fatiguing byproducts, and its use is important in delaying the onset of anaerobic glycolic system. 
However, because it runs out quicker, there is a need to work at a higher level of intensity for longer. The body then finds another source of energy to resynthesize ATP. It can do this using carbohydrates in an anaerobic glycolic system. The advantages of the ATP P system. ATP can resynthesize rapidly using the ATP PC system. Phosphocreatine stores can be resynthesized quickly. For example, 30 seconds, about 50% is replenished, and after 3 minutes, 100% of phosphocreatine stores are replenished. There is also no fatiguing byproducts. It is possible to extend the time the ATP PC system can be utilized through the use of creatine supplementation. Some of the disadvantages of the ATP P system. There is only a limited supply of phosphocreatine in the muscle cell. This is why it can only last for a maximum of 10 seconds. Only one molecule of ATP can be resynthesized for every mole of PC. PC resynthesize can only take place in the presence of oxygen. For example, when the intensity of the exercise is reduced. The short-term lactic anaerobic system, anaerobic glycolic system. The ATP PC system is an intermediate anaerobic system, but as already discussed, can only supply energy for a short amount of time. The short-term lactic anaerobic system, also called the anaerobic glycolic system, provides energy for high intensity activities for longer than the ATP PC system, and it provides energy for high intensity activity for longer than the ATP system. However, how long the system lasts depends on the fitness of the individual and how intense the activity is. Working flat out to exhaustion will mean the system will last as a much shorter time, hence short term. This is because the demand for energy is extremely high. For example, an athlete that's running 400 meters in under 45 seconds, however, they will not be able to run again immediately after at the same pace. However, if they reduce the intensity they can run for around two to three minutes as the intensity and the demand is less. The aerobic glycolic system resynthesizes ATP from the breakdown of the fuel glucose. This is supplied from the digestion of carbohydrates and is stored in the muscles and the liver as glycogen, where it is readily available. Key terms you should know. Short-term lactic anaerobic system. This produces high-powered energy for high-intensity events, such as the 400 meters. How the lactic anaerobic system provides energy. When the PC stores are low, the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase is activated to break down the glycogen into glucose, which is then further broken down into frubic acid and the enzyme phosphofructokinase. This process is called anaerobic glycolysis and takes place in the sarcoplasm of the muscle cells where oxygen is not available. Since this is an anaerobic process, the pruvic acid is then further broken down into lactic acid by the enzyme lactic dehydrogenase, or LDH. During anaerobic glycolysis, energy is released to allow the ATP resynthesis. The net result is two molecules of ATP are produced for one molecule of glucose broken down. There are actually four moles of ATP produced, but two are used to provide energy for the glycolysis itself. Here is a breakdown of the lactic anaerobic system. It comes from the muscle of the liver, create glycogen. The glycogen phosphorylase becomes glucose and the phosphofructinase then creates pruvic acid. The glucose is broken down by the phosphofructinase creating two ATP. The byproduct is lactate dehydrogenase or lactic acid. Advantages and disadvantages of the anaerobic glycolic system. The advantages are that ATP can be resynthesized quite quickly due to the very few chemical reactions and it lasts longer than the ATP PC system. In the presence of oxygen, the lactic acid can be converted back, in, back into liver glycogen or used as a fuel throughout oxidation into the carbon dioxide and water. It can be used for a sprint finish, i.e. to produce an extra burst of energy. The disadvantages. The disadvantages is lactic acid is the byproduct. The accumulation of acid in the body denaturalizes the enzyme and prevents them from increasing the rate at which chemical reactions take place. Only a small amount of energy can be released from the glycogen under anaerobic conditions. For example, 5% opposed to 95% under aerobic conditions. Under aerobic conditions. The key points about glycolysis are it breaks down the glucose to pruvic acid. It produces two molecules of ATP. 
and during intense exercise, pyruvic acid converts into lactic acid.